I've been asked by quite a lot of people to do a video on uh, my charge controller. So it's a Tesla Solar Tracker 5. Um, this is made by Tesla Chargers. Um, run by, or used to be run by, John Bedini, uh, rest in peace, who has recently passed away. Him and his brother uh, passed away, I think, a couple of months ago. Um, John Bedini is famous, or well, famous for lots of things, but famous in the free energy world for his uh, SG motor, and it's a um, it's a magnet motor that charges one battery. It uses basically two batteries, a bicycle wheel with magnets on it, and it charges one battery without discharging the other, um, which you know. In, in theory is impossible, but anyway, we'll <laughs> skip the free energy stuff. Anyway, this um, charge controller is made by him, personally, um, or at least that's what I've been told. Um, and so the people at Tesla Chargers, not to be confused with Tesla, the, uh, the car manufacturer um, run by Elon Musk, but uh, these solar charge controllers work in a slightly different way to a normal charge controller where you can see the green light is on, it says desulfating, um, which means that my batteries are at the top of their charge. It's basically on float now. Um, so I'll just show you, let's see if I can get, so you see Let's see if I can get rid of this reflection. So the batteries are basically on float now at 30 point, there you go, about 30.5 something volts. And it's putting in about 9.5 amps. <clears throat> and it'll stay there now. Um, it'll stay there until, until the sun goes away. Um, a lot of people have said that what this is doing is uh, just uh, boiling the hell out of my batteries. But, um, well, let's have a look. So we're at the top of our charge now. Let's see. You can see there's a couple of bubbles. A little bit of bubbling, but really not much. Um, their theory is that uh, well, you can you can. There's a bunch of information from them online, but their theory is that batteries should be taken up to the top of their charge at every point, and that way you avoid desulfation. So I've had this battery bank running now for about two months, I think, and I've not. Uh, done any equalization charges obviously because these batteries are being equalized every single day um, the equalization charge is normally up at around what the, the battery bank is floating at and uh, where's my so if you want to have a look so there's the specific gravity you can see it's fully charged uh, it's quite high um, yeah, and these batteries have never been equalized. Uh, well, never been equalized in the sense that, you know, I don't have to equalize them once a month because they're equalized every day. Um, so, yeah, and I just check the, the fluid. They don't, they use a little bit of fluid, but not much. I fill them up like once a month. And I use maybe, you know, a couple of liters for all of these batteries. Maybe a bit more than that. Um, but yeah, so far so good. And uh, there's no signs, well you can't see it in there anyway, but there's no, no signs of sulfation building up yet, but the battery bank is, is young, so, so you wouldn't expect that. So several people have asked me to see the inside of this uh, charge controller, so I've taken the top off so you can have a look. Um, one thing just to say, the overall build quality of this thing looks pretty pretty good. Um, I did have a problem with it when I first installed it. I installed it and you can hear that it's got this very loud fan. You see it's got this very loud fan on it. Um, so one day I was walking past and I couldn't hear the fan on. 
uh, which scared me because it's always on when the sun is shining. And in fact, the sun, the fan had um, had stopped working. It had burnt out. Um, it had burnt out because of a small manufacturing problem. So let's just have a look at the uh, at the inside of the unit, and then I'll, I'll explain what happened with the fan. But so here you can see there's a board with I don't know. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know what <laughs> any of these things are, but. You can get a good look there at what is going on. Yeah, so you can see the fan at the back there, and when where they where they have uh, put on this big heat sink, the screws had broken the housing of the fan. Um, a little bit so they had to cut the housing of the fan to get it in there and the screws had uh, broken the housing of the fan which had led the fan to rub on the side and with the friction eventually burn out so all I did was change change the fan but you can see there's this massive heat sink in here with whatever these things are on top and I'm not sure so when when the fan broke this did overheat and I'm not sure if this uh, this stained stuff on whatever these things are is um, is due to the to the unit overheating because the fan malfunctioned well the fan failed that's an 80 amp uh, internal fuse it's an 80 amp controller um, over here we have more stuff that I can't really tell you anything about. But so that's the basic unit. It's got these two, whatever they are, on each side. <laughs> really informative. The massive heat sink. Um, there's some info for you on what these things are. It'd be awesome um, if any of you do know what all of this stuff is to just write in the comments and tell me because I'm interested in learning obviously um, so yeah that's uh, the inside of the charger apart from the floor with the fan which was a basic manufacturing mistake because these things are made by hand um, and it looks like just parts from like you know radio shack or whatever apart from that it's been running flawlessly um, it would be awesome, well the company's closed, closed down now, but it would have been great if they could have made this uh, wall mounted, which wouldn't have been very hard at all, because um, it is a bit of a pain in the ass to have to put it on a shelf like this. You see I've got cables running everywhere, but um, so I'm going to update all of this anyway. But um, so maybe I'll just uh, turn let's turn the solar off a second and let it pull the batteries down a little bit and so then although there's not much power coming out of the let's see what's going on here so yeah we're just that's not going to show you much because it's going to pop it straight back up Yeah, so you see it takes it straight up to 30 volts. Sorry. And then as soon as it gets to 30 volts, it starts dialing down the current going in, and it stays about there. So there you have it. That's um, the Tesla Solar Tracker 5 made by John Bedini. Um, Tesla chargers. Uh, these aren't manufactured anymore, you can't buy them because they've closed down the company um, since John passed away. And so, yeah, I wasn't, I, it took me weeks to get um, any information out of Aaron, whatever his name is, Aaron, I can't remember his surname, something Akami or Murakami. Um, 
yeah, it, it took me a while to get any information out of them, and then in the end, I just got bored of waiting, and I changed the fan myself. I just went and got an industrial fan, and changed it, and and it runs, it runs fine. It runs really well. Um, so time will tell. Time will tell whether this thing does what it says it does. I I really took a leap of faith with buying this charger because I have a tendency to like um, alternative theories about things <laughs> um, and I've been following like the free energy movement for a long time I'm not making any claims to whether <laughs> free energy is true or false or anything like that but um, I've been following John Badini and his work for a while and I decided to take the plunge and buy this charger which cost me a lot of money it was about thousand five hundred dollars and then I had to get it imported to Spain it's for sure the only one in Spain I think and um, I had to pay import tax on it so it ended up being about thousand eight hundred euros um, which is a lot of money then like looking at it again um, I can get like I think three <laughs> classics uh, midnight classics for that amount of money but um, yeah, only well, time time will tell whether this is actually looking after my battery bank or uh, or not. What I do see is that it passes through the current very well. When my batteries are on float, I can run you know a bunch of stuff in in the house, um, and it, it passes the the current through well. Um, to that and the, the batteries get charged quickly and are on float generally by 11, 11.30 if I have sun um, but I don't drain them much uh, so so far so good I mean it, it takes out the need to um, to equalize your battery bank because it does it every day basically and so yeah time will tell so I hope that that has been useful to you and yeah that's it thank you for watching my next project's coming up is i've got this pip uh it's a 2424 it's just a backup since um that actually happened when the when the fan packed in i noticed that there are two very weak points in the solar system which is your inverter and your solar your charge controller if your charge controller goes you can't charge your batteries and if your inverter goes you can't use any of the power from your batteries so i bought this pip um, which is actually very cheap for about 400 euros uh, for what it is and that uh, takes care of that so if my inverter packs in which I doubt it because that's a 4000 watt inverter with three times nominal uh, three times nominal um, usage so up to 12,000 volts uh, volts sorry watts for uh, I think up to 30 minutes or something it's ridiculous it's super powerful anyway this video is going to be long <laughs> Um, so the pip takes care of if that packs in, my inverter packs in, the pip can take over and if my charge controller packs in for whatever reason then that can take over while I either get a new inverter or get a new charge controller. So I hope that was uh, useful to you and uh, yeah.